Hey, Cryptosans, it's 10 p.m. Pacific time. My name is Nicodemus, and welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter, where we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. And it's a Wednesday, December 21st, 2022. Halfway through the week, folks, let's get through it together. And let's start off with the exchange Paxful because Paxful has removed Ethereum from its marketplace. The CEO, Ray Youssef, told the 11.6 million users of the platform about the decision and shared it on Twitter. Now, Youssef said that they removed Ethereum from the marketplace due to three major concerns about the Ethereum ecosystem. He wants to maintain the integrity of the platform and combat economic apartheid caused by fiat monetary systems. Youssef wants to see Bitcoin helping people particularly those in the global south who are harmed by these systems. He said the first reason for removing Ethereum from the marketplace was the switch from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake. The CEO believes that proof-of-work is what makes Bitcoin honest, and that Ethereum's transition to proof-of-stake makes it a digital form of fiat. He also thinks that Ethereum is not decentralized, and that the ability to tokenize assets leads to scams and fraud in the cryptocurrency world. Further, He said that the tokens created by Ethereum have been scams that have stolen billions of dollars and have slowed down the mission of Bitcoin. He has also been an advocate for self-custody with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Especially after the collapse of FTX, he urged cryptocurrency holders to move their Bitcoin holdings to self-custody storage and encouraged Paxful users to do the same. And we've got news today in the Celsius bankruptcy because they received interest from 30 potential buyers for their assets. This would include assets in the retail platform and mining business. The company reported that it has been contacted by over 125 parties since September, with 30 of them signing non-disclosure agreements to protect sensitive information during negotiations. Celsius stated that it has received multiple bids for its assets. Some of these bids propose different transactions and business structures. These would include the idea of transferring Celsius customers to the acquirer's platform while reducing the value of their assets. The company also reported receiving bids for single assets. The auction for Celsius's assets is scheduled for January 10th, which was postponed from December 15th. According to earlier documents from Celsius, the bidding deadline was December 12th. Now, as of November 25th, Celsius held $2.6 billion in cryptocurrency. That said, even with all its non-cryptocurrency assets included, the company is still $1.2 billion short. Despite this, the company's mining operations have been profitable, with Celsius stating that it has generated positive operating cash flow every month this year as it adds more mining rigs. On December 20th, a bankruptcy judge granted Celsius's motion to allow a minority of its customers to withdraw their assets. This order also appeals to the ineligible withhold assets, which will be determined through the meetings with Celsius, the Withhold Ad Hoc Group, and the Celsius Official Committee of Unsecured Creditors. And we've got a CDBC watch. This time it's the European Central Bank, because they released a progress report stating that credit institutions and payment service providers will manage services related to a digital euro. The EU is among many regions globally that are exploring issuing digital versions of their fiat currency. The ECB will conclude its two-year investigation into a central bank digital currency in October of next year after which EU leaders will decide if they will issue one. The ECB's latest report explains how what they're calling supervised private intermediaries will be involved in the digital euro payment system. These intermediaries, which are supervised by the ECB, will serve as the primary contact for individuals, merchants, and businesses using the CDBC. The report stated that intermediaries will provide user-facing services, These include opening accounts or wallets, payment instruments, and onboarding and offboarding processes, including Know Your Customer and anti-money laundering checks. They will also offer services or interfaces for using digital euro in physical stores, online or in person-to-person. The ECB will oversee the intermediaries and manage the issuance and redemption of the CDBC. 
The ECB will finish a prototyping exercise in the first quarter of next year to determine how well potential back-end solutions from the Euro system can be integrated with front-end prototypes. Now, the Euro system is the monetary authority of the Eurozone. The central bank faced criticism from EU lawmakers earlier this year for choosing Amazon to design one of its prototypes. The euro system includes the ECB and the national banks of the 19 countries that use the euro. Staying on the topic of the central banks of Europe here, Coinbase has been approved by the Central Bank of Ireland to operate as a virtual asset service provider, or VASP. This will allow the company to use Ireland as a base from which to continue offering products and services to the individuals and institutions in Europe. Cormac Dinan, formerly of Crypto.com, Deloitte, and Citi, will lead the company's operations in the country. This means that Coinbase Ireland will now be regulated by the Criminal Justice Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing Act of 2010. This registration covers Coinbase Europe Limited and Coinbase Custody International Limited. Coinbase Europe Limited offers crypto trading services to customers in Europe, while Coinbase Custody International Limited provides crypto custody services to institutional customers. Coinbase Ireland Limited has already been authorized by the Irish Central Bank to operate as an electronic money institution, which allows it to issue electronic money provide electronic payment services, and handle electronic payments for third parties. And sticking with Europe here, in Britain, a judge ruled that Peter McCormick must pay Craig Wright around $1.1 million in costs following their legal battle. Now, Wright is an Australian who claims to be the inventor of Bitcoin. Wright argued that McCormick should pay the majority of the costs, but agreed to pay all of McCormick's costs except for those ruled in Wright's favor. The costs ruled in Wright's favor are related to an earlier judgment in October, which found that McCormick could not prove that he was telling the truth when he labeled Wright a fraud. The whole thing started from a discussion in 2019, which was broadcast on YouTube, in which McCormick called Wright a liar and a fraud. McCormick said that Wright is not Satoshi. Wright claimed that these comments caused him financial damage because he was disinvited to speak at various events and conferences. Now, if you remember, back in August, the judge concluded that Wright had provided false evidence in his claim. And at that point, the judge awarded Wright only nominal damages of one pound. In the final judgment, the judge refused Wright's permission to appeal this decision and also did not grant Wright's request for an injunction against McCormick repeating these claims. Craig Wright has been involved in multiple legal battles regarding his claims to be Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi Nakamoto published the Bitcoin white paper in 2008 and released the first version of the software in 2009 before disappearing from the community in the years that follow. And staying with the UK here, Crypto.com had an advertisement for its NFT product banned by the Advertising Standards Authority in the UK. Allegedly, this ad did not clearly show the risks and fees associated with investing in NFTs. This is the second time this year that the exchange has had an ad banned by the industry's self-regulatory organization. In January, the ASA banned two ads from Crypto.com because they said the ads were misleading and irresponsible. The ASA said that the ads took advantage of consumers' lack of experience or credulity. The ASA said that the ads did not clearly state that cryptocurrency investments are not regulated in the UK. Now, back in August, Crypto.com received approval from the Financial Conduct Authority to operate in the country. The ASA said that the Facebook ad for Crypto.com's NFTs in July was misleading because it did not include any risk warning and did not make it clear that NFTs are unregulated crypto assets. The ASA also said that the ad did not disclose any fees or charges on the platform and told Crypto.com to include clear warnings about the risks of NFTs in their advertising and not to omit material information about fees. Now, for their part, now, for their part, Crypto.com argued that the ad promoted the trading platform and not a specific NFT. They said that that makes it unreasonable to request that the ad include warnings about the risks of investing in NFTs. 
The exchange also claimed that the ad only referred to buying NFTs, which are fee-free. So mentioning fees in the ad was not relevant and would only confuse consumers. And we're not quite ready to leave the UK yet, because in the UK, transactions involving designated crypto assets made from 2022 to 2023 will be eligible for the investment manager exemption. Now, the government announced this legislation in April, and it has now been implemented by the HMRC. On December 20th, the HMRC published the definition of designated crypto assets and added them to the list of qualifying investment transactions for the investment manager exemption. And while it's true that this regulation does not clearly define designated crypto assets, however, it does refer to investment transactions as defined in the investment transactions from 2014. That means that transactions involving the provision of services while the crypto asset is being held by a non-UK resident will not be counted. The investment management exemption is a tool used by the UK to enhance its status as a financial hub. It allows non-UK resident investors to appoint UK-based investment managers to conduct certain investment transactions on their behalf without being subject to UK taxation. So, while undefined, designated crypto assets will be treated the same as stocks and other assets held by British funds on behalf of non-British investors. This measure was introduced as part of the government's fintech sector strategy on April 4th. So it's expected to provide clarity on the tax treatment for UK investment managers and their non-UK resident investors who want to include crypto assets in their portfolios. This may also encourage new crypto asset investment management businesses to set up in the UK. The HMRC's decision reflects the previous government's long-term strategy. However, there are indication that British regulators may have different views. Ashley Alder, the incoming head of the UK's Financial Conduct Authority, recently told Treasury members that the crypto-related businesses were, quote, deliberately evasive and suggested that the sector facilitated money laundering. Meanwhile, in France, French financial regulators, the Autorité de Marché Financier and the Prudential Supervision and Resolution Authority, recently added more websites to their blacklist of unauthorized investments in forex and cryptocurrency. These websites are considered illicit players in these markets. The regulators recently added 15 websites to their blacklist of unauthorized investments in forex and cryptocurrency. Of these 15 websites, only two of them have the word crypto in their names. The number of crypto-related websites that were blacklisted has decreased significantly this year. In 2022, only two websites were blacklisted in the crypto derivatives category. This is a 92% decrease from the 24 sites that were blacklisted in 2021. Similarly, they recently added a total of 49 websites to their blacklist of unauthorized Forex investments. This is compared to the 61 such websites in 2021. The regulators are warning investors to be cautious and to make sure that any intermediaries offering financial products or services are authorized to operate in France. Now, they recommend checking the official roster of authorized investment service providers and the list of authorized intermediaries in the financial investment advisor or crowdfunding categories. Since 2021, the cryptocurrency market has shrunk by more than 70%, leading to significant losses for crypto investors. This may be the reason why so few sites have been flagged. I say that because the French government has generally been supportive of the digital asset industry. They have also granted approvals to several major global cryptocurrency firms. For example, in May, the AMF granted registration to Binance. This allows the company to provide crypto-related services in France. And going from Europe to a little closer to home, we've got Brazil. Cryptocurrency regulation in Brazil is set to be implemented tonight. The legislation, which was passed by the Chamber of Deputies two weeks ago, targets virtual asset providers. If the president does not veto it by the end of the day, it will automatically become law. Brazil has a history of digital payment innovation, including PIX, a fast, inexpensive instant payment system, and a 
digital currency being tested by the central bank for potential issuance in 2024. And back in the United States, starting on January 1st of next year, the state of Alaska will require companies that handle digital currencies to have a money transmission license. The state has updated its money transmission regulations to define virtual currency as a digital representation of value that can be used for exchange or as a store of value, but is not considered money. This amendment was made by the Division of Banking and Securities. The amendment also includes virtual currency as a permissible investment and part of the definition of monetary value, but excludes affinity and rewards programs and online gaming tokens from being considered virtual currency. Now, in the past, companies handling cryptocurrency in Alaska have already been required to have a money transmission license. That said, the previous version of their limited licensing agreement with the Division of Banking and Securities specifically excluded digital currencies. These agreements will no longer be valid starting on January 1st. Alaska is one of nine states that offer a 0% capital tax gain to investors, but recent research shows that it ranks 36 out of 50 in terms of cryptocurrency adoption. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. We'll see you tomorrow night.